way to increase that. Seven Nightly News with Peter Mitchell. Tonight's sweet grand final victory for the Ruse. Fans their colourful best for the century's last clash. And even our Dilly peacekeepers call time out to watch the big match. Good evening and welcome to this special grand final edition of Seven Nightly News. And the Kangaroos are the toast of the football world, bouncing the Blues to win the last grand final of the century. A packed house of more than 94,000 people saw the All Melbourne Clash, the first for six years. Darren Linton begins our coverage of Grand Final Day 1999. It's called the Members' Reserve, but unless you pay an extra $20, you can't reserve a seat. The only alternative is to camp out. I was here at 9 o'clock last night. And when the gates open, the gentry break into a less than dignified sprint for a seat. <laughs> Free book tickets mean you can linger longer in the car park. No Melbourne needs a team that plays to win for you and me. Chicken and champagne. Chicken and champagne. For how long? Before the game? Oh, until about 12 o'clock. <laughs> and then kick on. Breakfast is a little more refined at the traditional North Melbourne function, and so are the guests. He loves me not. He loves me not. He loves me. <laughs> but who does the Prime Minister love? I'm, I'm going to back uh, Carlton by, say, let's be generous, say 25. A kangaroos by at least five. As his team arrived at the ground, Blues President John Elliott was bursting with confidence. Well, we played mighty football in the last couple of weeks, so we can keep playing like that with him. I'm probably not as nervous this time. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good, so I'm looking forward to a good game. Going to go harder early and just set it up now, hopefully, John. Great day for you today. As the players prepared for the battle, fans formed the last chance line, hoping for tickets. Well, he announced that there was a thousand tickets last year for sale, so we're hoping he does it again. He didn't. If you're waiting to purchase tickets, you're wasting your time. That only forced up the price, scalpers asking $700. Probably a bit more, mate. Got nice seats under cover. Supporters with a ticket went to extremes to show their true colours. Hopefully I won't have to go back next week and have it erased. Because we're going to win the cup. And Stone Man made a fortune flying the flag for both clubs. Not everyone joined the crash at the ground. The Blues' unexpected rise left this Carlton couple at the altar instead of the outer. Such a shame. Go the Blues. Cancer patient Bill McDonald got his wish, joining the crowd with his son. These fans went to heaven on a Harley. But for a real entrance, you need one of these. The crowd also welcomed the newest members of the Hall of Fame. Actually, I never even thought I would, but go Blues. And farewell some of the game's retiring greats. Yeah, well, we had to get the monkey off the back. I'd like to see that. It took 10 tenors to match Tony Lockett's stature in the game. And the grand finale had the entire crowd dancing in the aisle. And for the last grand final of the millennium, something a little old fashioned. A traditional suburban battle between the Roos and the Blues. Darren Linton, 7 Nightly News. The Kangaroos stamped themselves as the team of the 90s by overpowering a gallant Carlton to win by 35 points. The Ruse, stung by last year's fade out against Adelaide, overpowered the Blues with 10 goals in the second half to win their fourth flag. Shannon Grant and Peter Bell kicking four goals each for the Premiers. Carlton's grand final theme was aggression. Dennis Pagan just wanted a clear path to victory. Adrian Hickmont and Anthony Stevens were there. Stevens' ankle injected and strapped until it could take no more. The first score took five minutes. The first mistake from a kangaroo kickout gave Ratton the opening goal. And he's going to kick the first goal. 
But Carey got the early honours of the key matchup. Capuano went into defence and stood strong. And Grant finished with great flair. The ruse by 12 points at quarter time. The Blues threw everything at it in term two and the first three goals put them eight points clear. But then the big fella put his hand up at the other end, not Carey, Corey. McKernan kicking two in two minutes. The Roos surged to go four goals ahead, Grant booting his third, but just when the Carlton defence looked to be cracking, an arm injury ironically forced Stevens to the rooms. The Blues finishing with spring in their steps, run in their legs and a manageable 20-point deficit. They call it the Premiership quarter and so it was for the Kangaroos with six goals to two. The loss of Murphy with a knee didn't help, but Carlton was crunched by a desperately committed unit. Mighty Mick Martin leading the defence as only he can. Oh, that is terrific stuff. By the time Grant kicked number four, the Roos were up by 43 points and beginning to celebrate. Grant's kick four. A vocal spectator brought a heated response from Pagan at the last break, the coach needing a moment to regain his composure. The Kangas' physical pressure forced Carlton into continual error in front of goal while the Roos didn't miss much at all. Mock, mock for his second. There were no tears for Ron Casey this time as Carey, who helped change the game when thrown into the middle, did what he does best. Great. Kicks the ball back inside. Carey's got it. The Roos triumph earning the title they set out to achieve at the turn of the decade. Team of the 90s. Mark Doran, Seven Nightly News. Kangas have won a fourth premiership. Well done, Dennis Pagan. You deserve everything you've got today. And so does your club. Tears of a different kind today for John Longmire. Oh. <laughs> Worthy winners, no question about that. But by 98, this is 99. Look at Mickey Martin. Oh, look at this one. Carey. Can't not believe it. Like a Richard Osborne's in there as well. Ozzy, go your hardest dippers in there. Champagne corks are flowing. And the Norm Smith medalist for 1999 is Shannon Grant. And the Kangaroos and their supporters don't have far to travel to celebrate. Their victory party is just getting underway across the tracks at the Tennis Centre, where Emma Power joins us live and a big night ahead, Emma. A huge night ahead, Peter. Thousands of fans are expected to turn up here at Melbourne Park, where the Kangaroos are expected to arrive very shortly. They're coming on buses. They'll be here sometime between 7.15 and 7.30. They'll then move on to Centre Court. They'll be presented to the crowd and they'll show off that Premiership Cup they've worked so hard for today. Day. But they're not staying after they've uh, presented, been presented to the crowd. They're going on to the Melbourne Convention Centre just over the back here where they'll have a private celebration. The fans will continue partying on though. It promises to be huge. The Blues meanwhile are over at Crown Casino's Palladium Ballroom commiserating tonight. But here, here at least there are smiles from ear to ear all over the place. It's back to you. Thanks, Emma, and a big Sunday in store as well, I'm sure. Even in Timor, this one day in September is cause for timeout. Aussie peacekeepers able to forget their dangerous role for a few hours thanks to a special satellite link-up arranged by the Seven Network. Crowding around the few televisions still working, they cheered. A special mention. And there are our troops, the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. We welcome them. The Prime Minister this morning, John Howard, thanked the Seven Network for taking these pictures to Dili today. And our thoughts are with them. More on East Timor after the break. Also still ahead, we cross live to the grand final winners and losers. Saturdays are getting bigger on 7. I can think pretty fast on my feet. Much bigger. On his head, on his back, on his hands. Meet Samo. He came from hometown Shanghai to clean up LA. Ah! Now he's taken the world by storm. Double the action. Doesn't even need a gun to get the job done. And triple the gems. Holden. 
Well, if you've seen earlier, North Melbourne Kangaroos has won the last grand final of the century. Mark Barretta is in the rooms. Mark, you've got the Norm Smith medalist and the victorious coach. Well done to both of them. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Well, the atmosphere down here is absolutely fantastic. Dennis, congratulations. A tremendous win today for the Yeah, Roos. look, it was sensational. Uh, the boys have uh, been great all year. And, you know, to win a premiership and to win the most wins in a, in, in a season for the club is just a, uh, a, 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 a great achievement. And every one of the guys who played with the team at some stage during the year should be really pleased with his efforts. Dennis, we spoke uh, after last year's grand final. It was a lot different atmosphere to today. It feels a lot better, doesn't it? it certainly does, and we're under enormous pressure, but the way the players came through, and we, uh, we, we're just so proud of each and every one of them. Dennis, your birthday yesterday, what a way to celebrate. Yeah, it is. I can have a, a, a few drinks and really uh, let my hair down now. Good and moving uh, Wayne Kerry onto the ball there uh, during the course of the game, that proved to be a winner for you? Well, he got some six or seven possessions and really uh, uh, really gave us an opportunity. His disposal was superb, and he used it well, and it probably got us two or three goals. And Dennis, this bloke wasn't bad either. Well, he was sensationally, especially early when it really mattered and, uh, you know, Shannon's been under enormous pressure and to see him come through today and, and, and win the Norm Smith medal, it's a great achievement and, uh, you know, it just shows you what a great player Shannon is and, and we know there are plenty of more good years left with Shannon. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks for your time. Shannon, just quickly, congratulations. A big thrill. Yeah, oh, it's just unbelievable. I never thought the day would come where I'd play in a premiership, let alone win the Norm Smith, but uh, this is just fantastic. Well done, mate. Enjoy it. Peter Landy is in the Carlton Rooms. Peter. Right, thanks, Mark. Well, things obviously a little bit more sombre here in the Carlton Rooms, and their chairman of selectors, Barry Richardson, has been good enough to join us. Barry, the mood in stark contrast to last week, obviously. Yeah, stark contrast, Peter. I think the uh, euphoria of last week was wonderful, but obviously uh, losing grand final is never a lot of fun. But uh, look, I think to the players' credit, they tried extremely hard, and I think we're not disgraced in any way. Murphy, what's the situation? It looked bad? Yeah, I think it is fairly bad. I think the fear is anterior cruciate ligament, which is the, uh, the horror of all players, of course, and it was it was a great shame for him. I thought he was playing well at the time and uh, it was very crucial at the time actually that he went down and at the same time Camp really missed that goal. It was a, a critical time. I guess uh, you can get something from the wreck, can you? Any positives? Oh look, I think the positives are that we probably uh, we came a long journey and, and no one would have expected us to get as far as we did because having almost made it, it's terribly disappointing yeah. not to be able to take the final step but uh, look, a lot of posit positives a lot of the young players got to play in a grand final and I think that sort of uh, that is just the experience that is invaluable really. Barry, I'll let you get to the press conference which is going on next door thanks for talking to us and good luck in the year 2000. My pleasure Peter, thank you. Bones Richardson, the Chairman of Selectors at Carlton, a sombre mood uh, here in the rooms Jim, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Pete, and thank you to Barry Richardson. Well, to the reserves grand final, and the Terry Danaher coach Bombers thumped the Saints by 57 points. And in the under-18s, the Paran Dragons won their first flag, short-circuiting Gippsland Power by 50 points. Well, Russia is back in contention in the Davis Cup semi-final against Australia, following a marathon win in the...